This celebrity's island has been classified as a dark coven for mischief. And no, it's not haunted, at least not by vampires or zombies, but probably by celebrities. Do not be surprised though, as there are a lot of dark things done by these celebrities that you can never imagine. But can you guess what these reprehensible actions are, who the participants are, or how they have lessened fellow human beings for their own pleasures? Are you curious as to why this island has been tagged as a dark world? Do not worry, for in this video, we will go into context about the dark world of Richard Branson. Stay tuned as we do. Who is Richard Branson? Branson began his entrepreneurial path in the music sector. In 1970, he launched Virgin Records, a mail-order record shop. The success of this venture allowed him to create a record shop and launch Virgin Records, signing renowned acts like the Rolling Stone and the Sex Pistols. In the late 1980s and 1990s, Branson extended Virgin to a variety of industries. Virgin Atlantic Airways, which began operations in 1984, rose to prominence in the airline sector. The Virgin brand encompassed Virgin Megastores, Virgin Mobile, and Virgin Trains, among others. Branson's fortunes increased significantly as the Virgin Group prospered. His ventures were distinguished by a mix of risk-taking, innovation, and customer-centric strategies. In 2018, Forbes put his net worth at more than $4 billion. Aside from business, Branson is recognized for his adventurous nature, having attempted several world records in air and sea travel. He has also dedicated himself to philanthropy, focusing on problems like climate change and drug policy reform. Richard Branson's path shows a daring and unusual approach to entrepreneurship that has had a long-lasting impression on the corporate world. Let us look into how the island came to be. Richard Branson purchased Necker Island, located in the British Virgin Islands in the late 1970s. He bought the island for about $180,000 when he was only 28 years old. At that time, Branson's principal source of cash came from the success of Virgin Records, his record company. Necker Island's funds were most likely sourced from the earnings of Virgin Records, which had grown to be a major force in the music industry by the 1970s. The label's success was fueled by huge artist signings and hit records. Branson's entrepreneurial efforts, notably the record label, created the groundwork for his riches, allowing him to pursue other economic opportunities such as acquiring Necker Island. Branson's wealth increased significantly over time as the Virgin Group expanded into other industries, cementing his standing as one of the most successful and renowned entrepreneurs of his generation. However, we are not here to discuss the wealth journey of this man, but his negative use of wealth built over time. The record of things that have been going on on this island is just something an average man just cannot behold. The Abuse of Power In a recent BBC documentary, Millie, an accountant from the Necker Island's accounts team, revealed a frightening tale about the island's inner workings. Guests were given the unusual choice of eating sushi served off of a staff member's naked belly during a birthday party. What began as a seemingly benign proposal became an uncomfortable reality for the Necker team. The island's unusual culinary customs go beyond sushi being served. A strange order requires that the people providing food match the seductive vibes of the wonderful dishes they deliver. Assuming the role of a matchmaker, Branson meticulously monitors the romantic relationships among his team's attractive and single members. However, the peculiarities of Necker Island extend far beyond the gastronomic sphere. Guests are urged to make golf into a spectacle by hitting balls at human targets. In the game of sumo golf, a strange occurrence occurred when British tourists pelted a bouncing staff member on an offshore trampoline with golf balls manufactured from soluble fish food. This should include jail time. The human targets pain, demanding the use of an ice pack for alleviation, providing insight into the island's darker side. Necker Island's unique blend of opulence and eccentricity reveals a side that goes beyond the gorgeous beaches and attractive celebrities, creating a portrayal that may be interpreted as frightening. Sexual molestation. This whole story paints a disturbing and at times unnerving picture of the odd activities on Necker Island. Allegations of Richard Branson's inappropriate behavior have cast a pail on the sun-soaked gateway. In a stunning controversy, Antonia Yana, Joss Stone's backup singer, went on Facebook and accused Sir Richard Branson of making unwanted advances at a 2010 party on the island. Yana described an uncomfortable incident in which Branson inserted his head between her cleavage, audaciously mimicking motorboat noises. Yana described an unexpected experience that disgusted her. To make matters 
about his words, she claimed Branson had also encouraged her to go topless at a party on Necker Island. Sir Richard responded by denying any recollection of the incident, contradicting claims made after inviting Joss and her band to his Caribbean villa following a performance at the Go Green Festival in June of 2010. A Virgin management representative defended Branson, claiming that everyone appeared to enjoy their time on the island. The representative emphasized that there was no desire to offend or make anyone uncomfortable, and apologized if anyone felt differently during their visit. These charges generated serious worries regarding the safety of women on Necker Island, raising doubts about the island's true nature beneath its ostensibly bucolic exterior. We really cannot say much as we have no evidence, but what we do have coming is enough to question Branson's actions. Occultic Group and the Wild Parties In 2018, many became worried by the relationship between the private Caribbean refugee and the Nexium sex cult, as pictures and videos came out. The controversial cult garnered a devoted following, including Smallville's Alison Mack. Just for many who have no idea about this group, Keith Raniere formed Nexium, a self-help organization, in 1998 and it became well known for its secretive and manipulative techniques, which drew consistency considerable criticism. Nexium, which operated under the pretext of personal development, was heavily criticized for alleged criminal activities. The disclosure of a subset within Nexium, known as DOS, standing for Dominus Obsequious Sororium, portrayed as a secret society where women were reportedly subjected to physical and emotional abuse is a major source of public dislike. Former members highlighted Doss's coercive character, describing a pyramid structure in which women were branded with Ranieri's initials and forced to obey through collateral. Furthermore, Ranieri's 2019 conviction for racketeering, sex trafficking, and conspiracy fueled Nexium's poor image. The trial exposed a pattern of exploitation, manipulation, and predatory behavior throughout the organization. Anyway, according to reports, cult members led by Alison Mack threw wild parties on the exclusive retreat on two separate occasions. The cult's key players, including co-founder Nancy Saltzman, held seminars on Necker Island between 2007 and 2010. The motivation for these trips was chilling. They wanted to lure Branson into the organization, seeing him as the ultimate conquest. Interestingly, one of these undercover visits was funded by Sarah Bronfman, a philanthropist with close ties to Nexium. In 2010, photographs surfaced of Branson with Sarah and Mac on Necker Island, raising concerns about the island's suspected link with the cult. When asked for a statement, Branson said he wasn't aware of any seminars and had never heard of Ranieri. He thought he was only booking the retreat for Sarah Bronfman and her friends and family as a gesture of goodwill. Sir Richard's ties with the Nexium group or its head were similarly denied by Virgin Management. The Serene Island, formerly considered a haven, is now raising concerns about its possible long-term association with a decadent group involved in illegal activities. The debate escalated in 2017 when Instagram sensation Dan Bilzerian shared a viral photo of a friend straddling a 100-year-old Galapagos tortoise on Necker Island. To emphasize the critical nature of the situation, the Galapagos tortoise is seen in Dan Bilzerian's controversial photo is listed as vulnerable by the World Wildlife Fund. The controversy intensified when observers pointed out that the Galapagos National Park expressly prohibits touching or disturbing these tortoises, adding to the criticism of Bilzerian's apparent daring and cruel deed. As public dissatisfaction grew, Bilzerian responded defensively, stating that the workers on the island had convinced him that it was acceptable to sit on the tortoises. This generated intense arguments about ethical considerations and wildlife preservation, resulting in a storm of controversy controversy not only for Bilzerian but also for Richard Branson. Tax Evasion The scandals surrounding Necker Island continued to spread. Sir Richard Branson's image as a patriotic Britisher took a big hit recently when he acknowledged living as a tax exile for the past seven years. Surprisingly, his Caribbean island retreat, Necker, played a critical role in his tax-dodging scheme. Branson moved his main house to the British Virgin Islands, specifically to his island getaway, taking advantage of the region's tax haven status. In reaction to public criticism, Branson justified his choice emphasizing health concerns over solely financial ones in a blog post on Virgin's platform. Branson assured the public that his companies, including Virgin Rail and Virgin Money, continued to pay corporations 
tax and make substantial contributions to the tax system regardless of his non-resident tax status. But critics like Alex Smith from the UK Uncut, a group pushing for bigger tax contributions, did not mince words, saying Branson is damaging his brand. It is one thing to be dissatisfied with the actions of celebrities. It is another thing for them to take responsibility for their actions. Which leads us to the question, would Branson be sentenced to jail for his inaction to pay taxes? Would these celebrities be called to order by the government? And would these islands continue to justify their actions on less privilege just to make a few happy? Your insights are invaluable. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Additionally, if you want some good content, hit that like button. Do not forget to click on the notification bell so you know when great content drops in your timeline. Thank you so very much for watching our video. Hope all of you have a wonderful and fulfilling day.